I wanna to talk to you about a problem that I'm calling cold email over personalization. So this is an amazing cold email that I received from a rep. Josh, read your article about why salespeople need to become better openers if they want more success at closing deals. So highly personalized, very relevant. I responded and the rep booked a meeting with me. The problem of course is that emails like this take about 15 minutes to write and that's just for one email. That's not the entire sequence. So I started thinking, are we over personalizing and over engineering emails? What would be better is if we could actually write an entire sequence that was personalized and relevant, but in two minutes instead of 15. So not just one email, but every email in the entire sequence. So the inspiration for this, as I mentioned in part one, came from a book I loved when I was young called Mad Libs. And what was great about Mad Libs is you just filled in the blanks with adjectives and nouns, and you'd read it back and it would be this entertaining story. If this wasn't pre-written and you were staring at a blank page, it would not have been so entertaining. That's because the people at Mad Libs are good writers. And so I started thinking, why are we expecting salespeople to be Mad Lib writers? What if we provided some great copy and allowed reps the ability to fill in the blanks? So let me show you a demo of what that looks like in more greater detail. So I'm using a product here called reply.io, but it's very similar if you're using a tool like Outreach or SalesLoft. And you'll notice here that I have two sequences and only two per persona. So this is for a VP of sales. And one of the sequences is called personalized and relevant. Um, that means that I'm gonna actually be able to find something about the prospect that I'm gonna be able to use to personalize not just one email, but the whole sequence. Or I'm not gonna be able to find that at all because some prospects just don't have anything that you can find that's actually relevant to how you can help. So we have this other use case over here. Um, let me actually tell you how to set this up first and then we'll delve into this and we'll actually do one together. So I'm gonna go into settings and again, this might vary based on the technology that you're using, but the idea is the same. Um, we're gonna create these things called custom fields and the custom fields are very similar to these little fill in the blank areas over here, right? So if I come over here and I go to custom fields, I'm gonna suggest that you actually only create four. And these will make a lot more sense once you see the context. But the first one is I came across your, and you can imagine here that the rep's gonna have to type something in. So I came across your post, your company, your comment, your CEO. It's a very versatile sentence that can be used on lots of different ways to, to hook someone with the first sentence. On um, this next one, really enjoyed. So something a little bit more detailed, you know, really enjoyed your take on what you said about building a company culture. And then this one, any way out of curiosity. And then we're gonna ask a question, uh, what I call an illumination question, that gets the prospect to think a little bit differently about how they're getting the job done today without spilling all the beans so they feel inspired to respond. And then regardless, um, I always like to end emails on a high note. It's called the peak end rule. When you end on a high note, you make people feel good, they remember that, and they're more likely to respond. So this is gonna be the end of the email. So I put these things in there as text fields. And in the sequence that you can see here, when I go to personalize and relevant, you'll see all these touches. But as I go into the first one, you'll see the Mad Lib text that the writers wrote here and what the salesperson is gonna fill out here. So I came across your post, your article, your CEO's quote, really enjoyed his two cents or her two cents on. So this will make it a little bit more specific. Um, any way out of curiosity, here's that illumination question. Again, illumination questions are very powerful in cold emails because they get people to think differently about how they're solving the problem without giving too much away so people feel compelled to respond. Um, this text is gonna go in every email. This is the value proposition. And then the little adrenaline shot at the end, ending on a high note. Um, it's a heuristic called the peak end rule. When you end on a high note, people are more inclined to remember that and respond. So this is how the personalized variables are gonna get slotted in and we'll show you how they get there in a second. 
What's also interesting to note is that these variables are also used in interesting ways throughout the entire rest of the sequence. Uh, so let me actually show you an example of that um, over here. So a little bit later on, these are not threaded. Um, I never like to mention a failed attempt. So either these are all standalone emails. So they probably won't even remember the email that was sent, I don't know, a week ago from this one. So, you know, as mentioned, and then the really enjoyed personalization is gonna get slotted in here. Uh, so leveraging that personalization across different touches. Um, anyway, that's called an awkward transition. Um, are you open to a different perspective for booking meetings with prospects who don't respond to traditional cold emails? So you can see how that's used here. But not every touch is going to have the personalization because it just doesn't need it. Uh, so by way of example, if we look at this one, uh, subject line, send me, uh, send me a cold email and I'll send you a revision that might increase your response rates. No cost, no ask, no anything. If you like it, let's talk. So there's lots of emails like that that are relevant but not necessarily uh, personalized. And this goes on uh, for 30 days. Once you actually do the research, again, the whole sequence is done. Well, let's see how to do the research. So I'm on a profile now for a prospect. This is John Jensen. He's actually a, a client of mine. He is an ideal target. He's a regional vice president of sales. We're on his LinkedIn profile. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for some information that we can use to personalize the email with. There's lots of different places we can look but for the purpose of this email, I'm gonna zip down to this section over here uh, called experiences. And we'll see over here that he's leading an inside sales team, seven first line leaders, and he is passionate about helping them become the best version of themselves while helping customers achieve more. So this is an interesting quote that somewhat ladders back to how we can help reps write better emails. So we're gonna actually use this. You'll notice over here that in the technology I'm using, which is reply.io, it opens up a little window next to it. And down over here, you're gonna see the Madlib form pop up. So I came across your profile on LinkedIn. And I could write, you know, the experience section of your profile on LinkedIn. Really enjoyed your philosophy on helping people become the best version of themselves while helping customers go further, faster. That's done. And then anyway, out of curiosity, so these questions take a little bit of training to write, but I'm gonna write this one. What are you doing to increase your team's cold email response rate to ensure your, you, to ensure you meet your, to meet monthly, to meet monthly meeting targets? Regardless, we'll draw one shot at the end. It's refreshing to stumble across a exec that's so passionate about coaching reps. And then I'm gonna hit save to reply. And when I do that, what's gonna happen is this extension is actually gonna push that into the prospect's record. And then what I'm gonna do is just add that prospect into the sequence and I'm done. So let's take a look at that. So here's John Jensen, he's been pushed into reply. I'm gonna add him to the personalized sequence, move and I'm done. So if we come into sequences, we should be able to see what that looks like by going to the preview window. And as we can see, it worked perfectly, right? So, hey, John, came across your profile on LinkedIn, really enjoyed your philosophy on yada, yada, yada. Anyway, out of curiosity, there's the illumination question. There's the stuff that's in every single email. And here is the little adrenaline shot at the end. And it's the same exact thing for every single email in the entire sequence. As we kind of scroll down here, you can actually preview um, every single one of them. Hope this was helpful and gives you an idea of how this works. Again, if you didn't find anything that's personalized or relevant, you just put them into the relevant sequence and that essentially is another version of this that strips out the personalization. Hope this inspires you. If you have any questions, let me know. Take care.